Well, good morning, everybody. I am uh, Gary Sparrow. I'm the membership director at the Henry County Chamber of Commerce. And we are here with another webinar. And this uh, morning we have Josh Duncan with F5 Financial. And he's gonna talk to us a little bit about uh, retirement plans, investing uh, during this current crisis that we're in. Uh, just to remind everybody, we do have uh, our other webinars that we've done in the last few weeks. They are available online. This one as well will be recorded. And you can find those at our resource site um, together for the number four henry.com. So if you're looking for any of the other ones, or if you uh, want to tell anybody about this one, uh, they will be out there. This one will be um, up on the site probably tomorrow. Uh, so right now, I know we'll have some other people kind of joining along the way, I'm sure. And at the uh, end, when we get done, we'll have an opportunity for some questions. You can use the chat feature or the Q&A feature, and we'll go through those questions uh, kind of at the end when we, uh, when we get through. So right now, I'm going to turn it over to Josh Duncan. Good morning, Josh. Hey, good morning, Gary. How you doing? Doing good. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, Gary asked me if I would just talk a little bit about retirement and investment plans during the coronavirus and the crisis that we've got going on. So first, just a little bit about me. As Gary said, I'm with a, a local firm, F5 Financial Planning. Um, and, and so we're just off the square. But also, I just wanted to share a little bit about what I do and, and what I don't do. I'm not sure why everybody may have joined today. But basically, uh, I do financial planning, long-term planning, a focus on long-term goals, and definitely focus on beliefs and behaviors that ultimately lead to freedom and significance. That's what our focus is. What I am not is I am not a day trader. Um, I'm not going to give you uh, tips on stocks and things like that to buy today. We're really going to be talking about how we respond and how we, how we uh, let our plans do their work in, in these types of uh, crises. So first, my question, um, as, as everybody's sitting there thinking, is do you have a financial plan, which includes a retirement plan? And the reason I ask that question is that, um, again, when we get into a crisis, as everybody knows, we want to have a plan in place that defines how we're going to react instead of waiting for it to happen and then, and then us reacting to that. So, you know, the first step in creating a financial plan, which is a big one, is is putting together uh, your goals. What's important to you? You know, that's probably retirement for most folks, college, maybe tax planning, charitable giving. Um, these are all important aspects of your financial plan. And, and identifying each one of these goals, you know, retirement, for example, could be how old do you want to be when you retire? Where do you want to live when you retire? Uh, college, obviously, having the, maybe you're planning to send kids to college and how are we going to finance that? Um, but, but notice I haven't mentioned anything about investments yet um, because really investments are just fuel for the hopes and dreams and the goals and plans that you've set. Investments are just that fuel. So, so first and foremost is developing a financial plan. And then second, once you know, once you know what your goals and plans are, then you can create what's called an investment policy statement, okay? So what an investment policy statement does is it takes, to, it takes into account your comfort level with the ups and downs of the market, okay? And also how that uh, sits with your, with your goals, okay? So what are you trying to do long-term and what type of return do you have to get on your investments to, uh, to make that happen? Um, when you, when you set up an investment policy statement, the whole point of it is to take the emotion out of your decision making. So right now, everybody is probably very emotional about what they're seeing in their investment accounts, what their goals are, how, you know, how all that's going to come together. And if you've been invested in the stock or bond market recently, you've probably, uh, had some of those emotions run through your mind or your body, even talking with some of your friends or family, and it doesn't necessarily feel good if your portfolio has gone down 30%. But um, I'll throw out a question. You guys can answer it in the chat if you want, or just 
answer it yourself, but how many people over the last month have had a thought like a thought like this? What what stock should I buy now since they're all down? What what type of investment should I make right now? Things seem to be on sale. But I'll just kind of go back again and and again you guys can answer that or we can grab that in the question the question time but the purpose of your investment policy statement is to keep you on track when it feels like things are off track which could be right now so we want to take the emotion out of your investment decisions we want to do all that planning work up front so when the crisis hits you you already have a plan in place and you know how to respond okay and that's really in my opinion, that's really the secret to how we respond to any kind of crisis, any kinds of up and downs in the market. We have to set our plan in place up front. Okay. And that takes into account, as we've told our clients uh, at our firm, that we've already put the plans in place. We've already accounted for these kinds of downturns to happen so often. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to share my screen real quick. Um, because some of you may have some questions. Well, you know, how has the market done in the past? Some of you may have been invested in 2008, 2009 when the market was down, or even the early 2000s when the market was down. What does that mean for me? How does the market come back? We actually just put a, a blog post out on our page, f5fp.com. Uh, you can go and check this out, but how do downturns work? And, and how does that, you know, how, how, do, how do our investments respond? So right here, <clears throat> what you're seeing in this chart right here is you're seeing the, the market from 2000 to 2019. Okay, you can see the, the, the light blue is the positive calendar year return. So in, on December 31st, how did the market, how did the stock market end? Okay, you can see all these up years. The dark blues are the negative years, not as many of those. That may make you feel a little bit better. Uh, now, the red, what you see in the red, these dots are the largest intra-year decline. So how much, sometime throughout the year, did the market decline? And what's interesting is every single year, there was obviously some sort of pullback throughout the year. But the market may have still ended up. Now, the correlation here, the larger pullbacks throughout the year, common sense says that's going to make it harder to end on a positive note, which is what we saw in these years. So, for example, 2008, anybody that was around then, the market ended with a 37% reduction. At one point, it was down 49%. But the market started coming back strong after that. Okay, early 2000s, some people call that the tech wreck. If you remember the, the tech bubble when the market came down, uh, big losses that year, 22%, but the market, the market came back. So I just wanted to show you this to let you know that even though we do have large um, intra-year declines in market return, which you're probably feeling in your own investment accounts right now, it doesn't mean the market cannot end on a positive note, although the larger declines we have it's less likely this year, doesn't mean things won't come back um, in the future. I'll just point out 2019 here, even though your investments may have went down a lot this year, you had a pretty good gain last year. So just wanted to show you guys that piece. Um, next, I just wanted to share a few things about some special rules that have come out during this during this time. Um, you guys are familiar with some of these if you've been on some of the other webinars. Some other folks have spoke about a few of these, but one, the obvious one, the tax filing deadline has been extended to July 15th. So if you have a tax bill, you can stretch that out and you, and without a penalty uh, or without needing to file an extension to July 15th if you haven't filed already. There is the relief refund that is out. And the relief refund is uh, a check that you may receive if you meet certain guidelines and that's based on your adjusted gross income and whenever that was last, whenever your last taxes were filed. So that was either 2018 or 2019. Okay. 
Um, if you have more questions on that, you can ask in the chat. I can give you some more details, but that is a, a relief refund. And if you have, if you've received a, a, just a standard tax refund in the past and the government have, has sent that to you electronically to your bank, you may have already received your refund. It may have already shown up in your bank account. Next, there's a couple things with your 401k. So first, 401ks allow for a hardship withdrawal. And there used to, there's different rules that define a hardship. I'm not going to get into all those right now, but um, right now the rule has changed for this year where you, if you've been impacted by the coronavirus, you can take a hardship withdrawal for up to $100,000, assuming you have $100,000 in, in your account, and avoid the 10% early withdrawal penalty. So with a 401k, whenever you take money out, you do a, a, a withdrawal, and you're younger than 59 and a half, you have to pay a 10% penalty because the government wants you to keep that money in long term. It's, it's one of the rules they put on there. However, if you've been affected by coronavirus, you can take that money out as a hardship withdrawal. You can avoid the 10% penalty and you can have three years to pay that money back and even in, avoid paying any taxes on that money. So that's, that's a nice, benefit if you're in a, a spot where you need to get access to that money. The second um, rule that they changed, again, for this year, as we know right now, for the 401k is a 401k loan. So you may know that you can borrow against your 401k. And what they've done is they've increased the rules where now you can borrow up to 100% of your vested balance or $100,000. It, the previous rule was 50% of your vested val balance or $50,000. Um, so now they've raised that up. Um, so that's, if you, again, if you're, if you're out of work and you need to access that money, that, that could be an option, but um, it depends on, on what your standing is with your employer. Uh, the next one is the, the PPP loan for small business owners. Uh, this kind of feels like old news right now, but uh, a lot of you have probably applied, may, if you're a small business owner, you may have applied for the PPP loan. And uh, as we heard last week, those funds have been depleted. There could be a, a more issued, but that's up to Congress. Um, however, if you did get that loan, uh, congratulations, because it was hard to get. And um, just, you know, I would work with your advisor and your tax accountant to make sure that, that you can account for how that money spent so that whatever can be forgiven will be forgiven. The last item I had was the EIDL loan, the Economic Impact Disaster Loan. Uh, this was the loan where you could get like a $10,000 kick right away. Uh, that has been modified. Uh, you can still apply for the loan, uh, but I think the initial amount that they'll give you now is $1,000. And uh, some of that loan, if you go to a certain amount, will have to be collateralized. Uh, but those are some options to, to try to get some uh, additional income. Those last two, PPP loan and EIDL are for small business owners. Um, but those are some options that, uh, that have been put out there for folks. Um, just before we jump into questions, just a, just a quick recap again on how we, on how we handle the, you know, our retirement investment plans during these times of crises is one, you've got to have a plan in place so that you can develop a, an investment policy statement to understand what your comfort level is in the market and, and take the emotions out of making decisions for your plan or for your investments. You don't, you don't want to, you want to be careful making emotional decisions with your investments because uh, it may not turn out the way you'd like it to. And, uh, and that's what this plan and, and maybe an advisor or somebody that can help you, you know, take the emotion out of that and make sure you're not making a gut reaction. So with that, Gary, I'll go ahead and if you've got any questions out there, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, yeah, everybody just uh, feel free to, to throw any questions out there in the chat or the, the Q&A. Um, I'll kind of start with just a, a friend of mine that, um, you know, uh, they probably don't have the investment statement that you're talking about because uh, they are concerned how much their 401k dropped. So somebody that hasn't already had, doesn't already have that in place. So um, they're kind of panicking at this point. Uh, just 
you know, what, what should they do? Um, should you look at changing up how your investments made if it's, um, you know, more risky, more, more conservative? Uh, should they make any changes along those lines? Do you think if they don't already have something in place to uh, to prepare for this? Yeah, good question, Gary. And I think the let me start out with four words that we need to keep in mind too during this time is um, it's not different this time. Uh, we've seen these kinds of downturns before, and so but the reality is the emotions that we feel are real and they're normal. And so we, you know, it is easy to get worried uh, as we, as we see our investment accounts change. So to answer your question, um, first, I wouldn't make any rash decisions. I wouldn't make any immediate decisions to just say, Hey, I'm going to change it all up or I'm, I'm going to go all cash or I'm going to go all aggressive. I, I wouldn't make those types of decisions at this time uh, because those are very extreme. Um, what I would do is if, if, they, if they're not working with an advisor and they want to do this on their own, uh, there are some tools online you can use, but identify how much you're comfortable in seeing your, and I say comfortable, what I mean is you should, you should expect any time your equity or stock type investments could go down by 50% at any time. Okay. Now, the market has always come back. It doesn't mean it's always going to, but historically it always has. So the question is, can you weather that storm, stay in it as, you know, as it comes out on the other side? So I would look at, sometimes these things are called risk tolerance questionnaires, but understanding what your comfort level is in the market and identifying a balance, how much stocks, how much bonds, you should have you should have that gives you that comfort level as well as the return you need for your goals and then they could go in and, and rebalance and set up their account in that manner um, but it needs to be calculated not just a just not just an immediate reaction uh, and then and then what happens over time is that you continue to go back and rebalance your investments to that and you know say it's I'm just I'm just given an example, say it's 70% stocks, 30% bonds. Well, when the, if the stocks, when the stocks start doing good again, you may have to move some stock money to bond money. That's called rebalancing. If the stocks go down, like we've seen, you may have to move some bond money into stock money, but you're trying to keep that, you're trying to keep those investments balanced over time, not reacting to what the market says. Does, that, right. does that help at all? Yeah, I think so. Um, Kind of following up with that, how would that change or or maybe um, how do you think it should change as far as the reaction goes, say for somebody that's in their 40s, early 50s, to somebody that may be in their 60s that are getting really close to retirement? Um, you know, I, I know for those people that are maybe a little close to retirement, the panic may be a little more when they see, you know, their, their 401k drop so much. Sure. No, that's another good question. So whenever we put together our retirement plans, it's important that we consider flexibility. And, and, the, and this can be really tough, especially if somebody was planning, let's just take the worst case scenario. Maybe somebody was planning to retire this year, maybe in a few months, maybe in the middle of the year. I would say first, you need to go back and reassess your plan to to see if the assets that you have are going to still map out to your long-term goals and if, there, and if there's any issues there. If there is, um, you know, maybe there, maybe someone, maybe they would be better to work another six months or 12 months, possibly. It really depends on their situation. Um, if, you've got, if you've got a long runway, 10 plus years, and, and you, you're able to continue to save, it's probably not a big deal. It's probably actually gonna benefit you if you're able to continue and save. Um, but if you are really close, what I, would, what I would suggest is going back, evaluating your plan, looking at your projections, and what, you're, what, you're, um, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is life expectancy, how much you, you're gonna need to spend in retirement to maintain the lifestyle that you wanna live, 
and if the assets you have and the uh, are going to continue to uh, to support those goals then you may not have to make a change if it looks like that you're going to have a hard time supporting those that's when um, some hard decisions may have to be made to either modify uh, investment strategies or, or potentially even work a little bit longer than originally planned. Okay, great, uh, great advice. Um, getting back to kind of the um, taking money out or borrowing from the 401k. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, you know, you said the rules are changed if you're impacted by this crisis. Is there, um, if you want to do that, what exactly does that mean? Is it, do you have to prove something? Is there some kind of guidelines as far as showing that, yes, I was impact? I mean, everybody's really impacted by it, but, uh, you know, is there something that's required as far as uh, proving that there's an impact there in order to take advantage of that? Yeah, that is a good question. And really it's self-reported on whether or not you've been impacted. Um, now, your 401k provider may ask a couple questions, but it's it's really self-reported on whether or not you've been impacted from that. That's that's kind of the reality. Again, that's probably only good for this year, and I hope it's only good for this year. Uh, don't want right. to don't want to do that again. Don't want to do this again. If if you are at the point where you feel like you need to take a withdrawal or a loan. Um, you'll want to contact your provider. They may even have something online to fill out the appropriate paperwork to do that. Um, something to keep in mind, there's, there's a difference between a withdrawal and a loan. And, and maybe we should just talk through this real quick. A withdrawal, if you take a withdrawal from your 401k, <clears throat> then that, that money's out and it, is, it could be taxed, but with this, with this current rule, you have three years to put that money back if you want and avoid paying taxes on it, which is a really, really nice benefit, okay? It does assume that you're gonna stay employed with this employer, which I know for some may not be as certain as others. Um, if you're gonna take a 401k loan, again, you're just borrowing against your 401k. You're not really taking the money out, which could be permanent, you're borrowing it um, and then you, you, you start to pay that back on some kind of payment frequency, which your 401k provider will set up for you. Typically, it's over five years with an interest rate that'll be prime rate plus a certain percentage, and you're actually paying that back to yourself. The one thing to note, though, <clears throat> if you have a 401k loan and you are you know, your, your employment terminates with your employer for whatever reason, either you change jobs or you know, uh, the unforeseen happens where the company may have to go out of business, then that loan, whatever loan amount you have left is going to be treated as income for that year. And, and there's no coronavirus protection for that loan being, uh, for, that, for that loan being attached to, to you if your employment is terminated. So I'd say that that 401k loan could be a little bit more risky if, if you if you see foresee anything like that coming up, uh, both both of the four hundred one k pieces assume that you're going to you know you're employed with that employer. Okay. And and let me let me just make a let me just make a distinction here too. If anybody's got the question got this question in their mind, four hundred one ks. When I'm saying four hundred one k, these are employer retirement plans. These are different than if you have a, a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Those IRA stands for individual retirement account. Those accounts are under, uh, they are not under these rules. They, they do not get special treatment uh, with these, these current rules this year for coronavirus. So if you go and take money out of your traditional IRA, there's going to be tax and, and penalty tied to that if you're penalty if you're younger than 59 and a half. So just if, if people think those terms are the same, they, they are different. They are two different types of accounts and rules. Okay. Yeah, I was actually about to, to ask that question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, so thanks for beating me to that one. Um, no problem. And, and I guess that goes back to, to um, when we're looking at these type of loans, I know a lot of people that 
may be in need of this money are, are small businesses that we've been talking about. Of course, a lot of our members are small businesses. Um, is that, and I don't know, you know, like I said, how they may have their retirement set up. It may be in IRAs or, or whatever. Um, is that, in your opinion, is that a, a good idea to, if they can't get the loans that they need to use that money to keep their business going? I mean, I, I know that's probably a case by case basis, but, uh, and you've kind of gone over some of the ramifications, having to pay penalties and taxes. Um, but, um, you know, should they use that money to, to keep their business going? Yeah, I mean, you said it, Gary. It's, it's a really hard question to answer without having a lot of details in, in somebody's specific situation. Um, I, I don't think that's something I can give a blanket advice on. Uh, I would encourage them to work with their trusted advisors, on, which would include their accountant, possibly their financial advisor if they have one, because there's a lot of angles that need to be considered there. Um, there, I think you guys put something out. So that, that's kind of my answer on that. I, I just, I can't give a blanket answer on that one. Uh, sure. I think it's okay to consider, but needs to be reviewed in, in detail. I thought you guys put something out. Uh, I heard in your, in a chamber letter or something that they can get um like people can apply to the Georgia Chamber of Commerce for some small privately funded loans. Is that? Uh, the U.S. Chamber just came out with something. The U.S. Chamber. Yeah, there are some restrictions on it as far as the areas you're located in. And, and I don't know if that's been uh, fully looked at. I'm not sure exactly all the guidelines there, but it, but it was a smaller, smaller loan that was available to certain chamber areas. So, uh, I'm not sure exactly on that. There's a lot more to look into that, but hopefully we'll we'll have some more information on that and, and maybe even uh, um, there's some webinars that we may make available through the uh, through the U.S. Chamber and Georgia Chamber as well. So hopefully we'll get a little more information about that. Okay, I I see that Kevin Callison uh, with Modern Women of America put out a uh, a chat here for everybody where some companies have waived penalties and surrender charges on annuities and cash value life insurance. So appreciate you sharing that, Kevin, that that could be something for somebody to look at as well if they have those types of um, insurance policies or, or investments through annuities. Could okay, great. Yeah. You, you, you have to, yeah, you have to talk with your individual company to see what the rules are. Thanks for that, Kevin. We appreciate that. Um, I guess we'll uh, we'll kind of finish up. I don't have any other questions out here right now, um, but maybe with with this, as far as uh, you know, we kind of talked about people about to retire. But if you kind of look on the other end, if people are in their 30s and 40s, just maybe starting out with a retirement plan, uh, with the stock market down, should they be more aggressive in in kind of what they do as far as uh, a financial plan to save for the future, or what do you think? Well, I think they should, uh, I'm just going to have to go back to what I said. I think you should put a plan in place and identify what those long-term goals are. I realize if you're 30 years old, those may change significantly over the next 30 to 40 years, but get something in place and identify how you're comfortable investing, whatever that is, and then stick to that plan. That's really, that's really what I encourage folks to do because again, your emotions can send you in different directions. If you're just getting started today, when the market feels down or is down somewhat, it's actually come back quite a bit since it went down, but uh, you're going to still have a different experience than as you go through the complete down next time and you're going to respond differently. So, so put a plan in place, develop an investment policy statement that's going to help you continue to invest over the long term. You can change it. You just don't want to change it when the market's going through these types of, this type of turmoil. This isn't the time to change and, and try to, uh, try to time the market, uh, in my opinion, for your, for your serious money, at least. Okay. Well, great. Um, and uh, Barbara just reminded me, we do have that, the U.S. Chamber Small Business Loan. Uh, the links for that are available on the resource page that we have together for the number four, henry.com. So you can find some more information out there. And, uh, and like I said, we, uh, you know, we'll make some other things available when, when they, come to us and we know more about it. I know things are changing almost on a daily basis right now. 
Uh, so, you know, we'll do our best to keep everyone informed and uh, let everybody know what's going on. Uh, so I don't see any other questions right now, Josh. I think you did a great job covering everything. Uh, so uh, I do appreciate that. And uh, if anybody has any questions after the fact, feel free to, to email them to me. Uh, Josh, do you want to put up your uh, contact info in the chat there if anybody wants to uh, uh, reach out to you for anything? Sure, I can do that. And, uh, do and that I'll leave quick. the... Um, I'll leave it up for a little while till uh, till everyone logs out. And uh, so if you need Josh's info, it'll be there in the chat. Uh, so at this time, I think we're, uh, we're good. And like I said, any questions, feel free to uh, email me as well. And I'll try to get you the answers or get you to the right person uh, for those answers. Check out our other webinars. And uh, again, thank you. We do... Uh, want to remind everybody we are going to have a virtual business after hours on Thursday at four o'clock. Uh, so you'll be getting a reminder about that. Uh, should be a lot of fun just uh, being able to see everybody. That'll be a meeting group. So we'll get to see everybody's faces. Uh, so that may be a, a fun time. We'll try to do something a little fun with that as well. And uh, so hopefully we'll see everybody there. Well, thank everyone for tuning in. Josh, thank you again uh, for participating with us and uh, answering some of those questions. And uh, like I said, I'll leave this up for a little bit so everybody can get the uh, Josh's information if you need it. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Gary.